Okay, Bert was working on a part, and it was this shaft actually, and he had it chucked up here, and you get a little bit of vibration on the back of your shaft, and if you have, the reason why it's a problem here is we don't have our little lathes set up in the shop anymore. Our smallest lathe is a 20 inch lathe that we use in here. We've got the little CNC, but uh, we don't use it right now either. So with a 20 inch lathe, three and an eight inch center hole, you got a lot of shaft hanging out here. You get back whip on your shaft sometimes. And Bert and I got to talking about extreme cases of that, which is where people will have a shaft a little bit longer than this even, and you might have a piece of three eighths shaft say and you're, you put it in your lathe and you don't have support and it just goes sideways and goes to whipping around, tearing things up, bending the shaft, and it's just nasty. So it brought out the other part of the conversation, which was our hollow spindle when we get it done. And that was what we were chatting about after work last night a little bit. And on the hollow spindle, which this one has a 11 inch hole in it and we don't have any chuck on it at all right now, but you get a hole clear through there. So even though you have good purchase on this right here, what do you do with a piece that's 40 foot long and you're out there 40 foot, you know? You're way out past the shop even on this where it's setting right now, it, which it won't set there when we're done with the lathe. But, and sometimes, you know, on a smaller lathe, just as simple as I've used a uh, strap on a crane with grease if you're not going too much. You can use rollers. But when you get way out there 40 foot and you're turning a 10 inch piece of pipe on your 11 inch hollow spindle and how do you keep that from moving the lathe around? How do you do that? And I didn't even explain it to Bert last night because I halfway thought I'd go ahead and we'd do a little bit of a video today on it. And you set up your roller so it's got either adjustable springs or one of the nicest ones is an air spring. You put an air spring on it because your tubing's probably gonna run out some too. So you have your rollers on the end so they can follow the stock. And we probably don't turn it at 22,000 RPM. Um, we could also have just plain, actually a bedded in precision second, you know, a whole nother tail stock down there. But uh, I don't know, you know, I don't know how they do that in the industry where they're doing lots of threads on the end of 40 foot pipe for, uh, for drill stem, you know, when they manufacture it. I don't know, that's, that's something I have not been exposed to. I've been exposed to uh, small shops where you do an occasional piece. The place where we ran into long shafts most of the time, I've only done a little bit of drill pipe, um, but was uh, marine shafts. We working on boat shafts. That's the point where we'd be out there 25, 30 foot. I've never been out 40 foot but 25, 30 foot with a four inch piece of shaft. That, that was something I did quite a bit. And uh, it wasn't really too bad to do. That was the, uh, the straps with the grease and uh, it worked out okay. The rollers, um, it's hard to get a roller stand unless you really make a nice one that doesn't move around on you. And, uh, but there, you'll figure it out. It's somehow you gotta let it, let it move a little bit usually. If you try and make it rigid on something that's really rigid, you're gonna be loading and moving your lathe around. It's, uh, so 